Their Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished participants. My name is Atle Sober. I'm head of the Secretariat of the Platform on Disaster Displacement based in Geneva. On behalf of the government of France and Fiji, I'm very pleased to welcome you to this commemoration of the fifth anniversary of the on the endorsement of the Nansen Initiative Protection Agenda and adoption of the Senda Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction and the Paris Agreement under the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. I would also like to recognize the support of the PDD Steering Group, the envoy of the chair of the Platform on Disaster Displacement, Professor Walter Kehlen, the International Organization for Migration and the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees in organizing this commemoration. Atli, thank you. You are going to explain us uh, the technical aspects now of the uh, working of the platform. Back to you. Thank you, Ambassador. So uh, kindly note that there will be interpretation in three languages, English, French, and Spanish, which can be accessed via the interpretation icon by just clicking on the language of your choice. You will see this on your screen. If you have issues, you can write to any of the persons with PDD in their name or contact at info at disasterdisplacement.org. I encourage all speakers to support the work of the interpreters by making sure microphones are working well and that all try to adopt a natural speaking rhythm. I also would like to bring to your attention the virtual meeting rules. The meeting will be recorded and will be uploaded on the PDD and other partner websites and social media channels. By remaining in the meeting, you consent to the meeting being recorded. I also ask you to please name or rename yourself with your country organization name as explained. We also invite all participants to use the question and answer function if you wanna have questions that you want to pose to the panelists. Finally, I would like to remind you or bring to your attention that the cartoonist, Mr. Joshua Knowles, is capturing the liberation of the commemoration with his drawings. I would like to invite Joshua to um, say a few words and just to check in that we are connected with the cartoonist that will draw images from this meeting. Good morning, Joshua. How are you? Good morning, Atle. Yes, I'm very well, thank you. And good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here today. Um, I will be, you say you have interpreters uh, of three languages, well, I will bring a fourth language and that will be the language of a visual language. I will be drawing illustrations throughout the day which uh, reflect the conversation that we have today. So I'm really looking forward to getting started. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joshua. And with this, it's my honor to hand over to the chair of this high level panel, His Excellency, Mr. Francois Rivasso, Ambassador, Permanent Representative of France to the United Nations in Geneva, an international organization in Switzerland. Mr. Ambassador, you have the floor. Thank you, Atli, uh, and thank you for the good work of your team in helping us organizing this. Uh, dear distinguished uh, guests, chers amis panelists, chers collègues, chers amis, bonjour à tous. Uh, comme vous le savez, euh, nous organisons aujourd'hui, sous forme de commémoration, le cinquième anniversaire de l'adoption de l'accord de Paris dans le cadre de la Convention des Nations Unies sur les changements climatiques dans, du cadre de Sendai et euh, l'approbation aussi de l'agenda de protection de l'initiative Nansen. Nous avons trois anniversaires à la fois et c'est donc euh, une journée très particulière pour nous. Je voudrais remercier tous les panélistes de très haut niveau. Vous, vous, je ne vais pas vous saluer individuellement selon vos mérites parce que vous avez trop de mérites et ce serait trop long. Euh, mais euh, vous vous êtes mobilisé. Votre présence est un témoignage du soutien que vous apportez à cette commémoration et donc du soutien que vous apportez à ces causes. Cet événement se déroulera, comme vous le savez, comme nous vous l'avons indiqué, de la manière suivante. Nous allons débuter avec ce panel de haut niveau que nous essaierons de conclure dans une heure à 10h10. Nous aurons trois sessions techniques qui concerneront chacun des trois agendas globaux dont nous célébrerons le cinquième anniversaire. Et notre secrétaire, M. Atli, euh, euh, pourra être le facilitateur de ces trois événements-là. Euh, D'abord, nous aurons un panel sur l'accord de Paris sur la question climatique, un, un panel sur le cadre de Sendai et un panel sur l'agenda de protection de l'initiative Nansen. 
à 13h25, nous euh, euh, aurons quelques mots de conclusion et nous espérons terminer à 13h30, si nous respectons les horaires, ce que j'espère. Pour votre information, vous avez accès à partir de votre ordinateur à la traduction simultanée en anglais, français et espagnol. So you can get through your computer uh, translation, simultaneous translation into English, Spanish and French. Vous pouvez tenir translation en castellano también à través del computador. J'ai le plaisir et l'honneur donc de présider aujourd'hui cette session inaugurale avec euh, Filippo Grandi, Antonio Vittorino, Madame Mamimi Souturi, Péteri Talas, Monsieur Vaïs Sarmat, j'avoue être très impressionné par euh, l'intérêt que vous avez manifesté au plus haut niveau. Nous aurons également l'occasion de partager une vidéo enregistrée par euh, les plus hautes autorités fidjiennes et euh, une autre par Monsieur Hakim Steiner, l'administrateur du PNUD, qui compte tenu du décalage horaire avec New York, n'a pas pu se joindre à nous, mais a tenu à porter son témoignage. Si vous le voulez bien, dans la mesure où aujourd'hui, euh, la, et depuis le 1er janvier, la présidence de cette plateforme est assumée désormais par le, le Fidji, l'État de Fidji. Je vous propose d'écouter, euh, pour commencer, un message enregistré par son Excellence, M. Josaya Voreke Bainimirama, qui est le Premier ministre du gouvernement de Fidji. Compte tenu du décalage horaire, lui non plus ne pouvait pas assister à cette réunion euh, en live, mais il a tenu à partager avec nous son message. Euh, Atli. Uh, could you send us the message of the Prime Minister of Fiji? Thank you. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Bulabinaka from Fiji, and uh, bonjour to our friends from France. The 16th of this month marks five years since Fiji became the first country to ratify the Paris Agreement. The urgency that drove us then has grown more existential by the day. Since 2016, 12 cyclones have struck our islands, three of which have reached Category 5 intensity. One of those storms set the record as our hemisphere's strongest ever, and another, Cyclone Yasa, devastated the north of our country just this past December. As I speak, Another tropical depression is trekking through our waters. By the time you hear this message, it could very well have developed into yet another cyclone. But it's not only stronger and more frequent storms we contend with. The seas are rising, rivers are flooding more often, and droughts are becoming longer. The reality is that uh, as a country with hundreds of low-lying islands, More and more Fijians are at risk of becoming disaster displaced people every day. The Paris Accords, the Nansen Initiative, the Sendai Framework, together these global commitments promise humanity a better future. For Fijians, the dire need uh, for each of them, as well as this platform for disaster displacement, are clear. As we are reminded with every new storm, this is a matter of survival. But five years on from the adoptions, it is our duty to ask, is that promise any closer within reach? After four years missing in action, a gross uh, moral failure, the United States of America has only just rejoined the Paris Agreement. At a time when every resource should be dedicated to building resilience, a devastating global pandemic has left service-based economies like Fiji's more vulnerable than ever. Meanwhile, the global system of development finance is still stuck in the same dated model suited for the challenges of the 1940s rather than the new and worsening crisis we face today. In short, if you have spent the last five years watching communities and livelihoods destroyed by a changing climate, the notion of a more resilient world is still little more than words on paper. The stuff of uh, pretty speeches delivered in far off forums. Pacific Islanders can tell you firsthand, time means everything when you have water lapping at your door. That's not to say we haven't made progress. Not so long ago, the concept of climate-induced relocation was often written off as too alarmist and too distant. Today, the efforts of this group and the platform 
give me hope that we can give that issue the urgency and creativity it deserves. And one country, company, and community at a time, humanity is taking steps to decarbonize and become more disaster resilient. The USA is not only back in this campaign. They are moving aggressively to make climate action a core priority of the new administration. More countries and companies are announcing actionable uh, commitments to reach net zero in a few decades, including France and the EU. Some of the more vulnerable communities are finding their own ways to adapt. Some are relocating. Others are being defended by seawalls. And past tragedies are informing better disaster planning and motivating world leaders, business executives, and entire institutions to build back better after a disaster strike. Still, as I sit with you today, none of the necessary steps are happening at the pace or scale that we need. We just aren't changing as quickly as the climate. And that failure is already costing us lives, livelihoods, and years of lost development. The global efforts to cut emissions, prepare for disasters, and manage displaced peoples are all interconnected. None can succeed without the others. That is why all of those issues sit at the heart of Fiji's climate action agenda. Our new nationally determined contribution under the Paris Agreement announced at the UK's Climate Ambition Summit has urgency written all over it. We pledge to achieve economy-wide net zero emissions by 2050. And that commitment will soon be legislated through a groundbreaking climate change bill. Our national adaptation plan maps out a multi-billion dollar effort to strengthen our climate resilience. Our commitment to plant 30 million trees and sustainably manage every square kilometer of our ocean by 2030 could very well mean Fiji becomes a carbon negative society in the not too distant future. And our rapidly strengthening disaster readiness has led Fiji to become the first nation to achieve target E of the Sendai framework. Fiji has also begun establishing our own transparent and inclusive processes for managing climate-induced relocation. We have identified at least 43 communities that need to be relocated to higher ground due to worsening climate impacts, with six moved already. We have developed and launched planned relocation guidelines to give affected communities a powerful voice in where, when, and how they are relocated and ensure that they have clear income generating opportunities available. And we have launched a climate relocation trust fund to put badly needed resources behind that effort. We've dealt with questions that only real experiences can expose and that only bold and innovative action can solve, such as how does a former fisherman make a living when his home has been moved to higher ground, away from the ocean he has known and mastered all his life. We won't find all the answers in the rhetoric of reports, panels, and pledges. The most important lessons are learned by doing, not as individual nations, but as one community committed to tackling this global crisis. That's what the Paris Agreement, Sendai Framework, National Initiative and Platform on Disaster Displacement represent. I've had the privilege of personally handing uh, keys over to families, to homes on higher ground after their old houses were lost to a rising Pacific. I know firsthand that even in our warming world, strong commitments backed by resources and hard work can bring hope back into the lives of the most vulnerable of our citizens. The past five years may not have been defined by the progress we hope for, but the next five years can be, as can the next 10, 20, and 30, until we achieve the ambition we've set for 2050. Thank you, and merci beaucoup.
En votre nom à tous, je crois que euh, nous devons remercier le Premier ministre de Fidji pour ses propos très forts et très émouvants qui euh, montrent à quel point la situation est dramatique, à quel point il est urgent d'agir. <rire> la situation mondiale, en effet, doit nous pousser à accentuer nos efforts. Avec des événements météorologiques extrêmes de plus en plus nombreux, nous déplorons chaque année, pour le moment, 25 millions de personnes nouvellement déplacées par des catastrophes. Et aucune région de la planète n'échappe. Il y a des effets particulièrement dramatiques dans le Pacifique, l'Asie du Sud-Est, l'Afrique, l'Amérique centrale. Monsieur le Premier ministre de Fidji vient de nous interpeller à ce sujet. Trop de pays souffrent depuis trop longtemps des effets néfastes du changement climatique et le nombre de ces réfugiés ne cesse de croître. C'est pourquoi nous sommes face à un défi majeur. Et ce défi majeur, c'est de faire en sorte que nous nous préparions à cette situation nouvelle. Souvenons-nous, Fidji a été le premier pays à ratifier l'accord de Paris. Souvenons-nous, l'année 2015 a été importante. La communauté internationale s'était mobilisée et d'importants engagements mondiaux avaient été pris, ceux que nous, dont nous fêtons aujourd'hui l'anniversaire. Trois ans plus tard, nous avons eu en 2018, euh, euh, Filippo Grandi, Antonio Vittorino s'en souviennent tout particulièrement, nous avons eu euh, l'adoption du Pacte mondial pour des migrations surordonnées et régulières et le Pacte mondial sur les réfugiés. Nous avons établi un cadre politique, mais sans précédent au niveau mondial. Ce qu'il faut maintenant, pour être euh, digne des efforts accomplis jusqu'à présent, c'est focaliser ces efforts sur la mise en œuvre complète de ces cadres, une mise en œuvre intégrée de ces cadres, pas une approche en silo, mais une approche intégrée. Et euh, jusqu'aux régions et jusqu'aux nations les plus touchées, jusqu'aux communautés locales souvent désemparées, afin de ne laisser personne de côté. Et cela nécessite une cohésion de tous les acteurs que votre réunion aujourd'hui illustre euh, largement. Aujourd'hui, en 2021, la crise sanitaire liée à la COVID-19 rend ces déplacements de population encore plus tragiques et difficiles et l'action encore plus nécessaire. Je voudrais exhorter les États et toutes les parties prenantes à la lumière de la pandémie et de la crise climatique en cours à ne pas cesser, mais au contraire à renforcer les partenariats au sein de la communauté internationale, dans une communauté multipartite et multilatérale, pour protéger les plus touchés par les effets néfastes de ce changement. Chers amis, ceci, cette journée conclut pour nous la présidence française de la PDD et l'objectif général de cette commémoration sera donc le point de faire le point sur la mise en œuvre de ces trois cadres globaux depuis cinq ans. Il convient d'examiner les possibilités et les défis pour intensifier l'action, pour renforcer la cohérence des politiques, pour mieux nous adapter, pour renforcer notre assistance et notre protection aux personnes déplacées. Euh, L'exemple de la PDD, de la plateforme, est exemplaire parce que c'est un partenariat d'État, d'organisations internationales, d'acteurs de la société civile, de chercheurs, d'universités, d'acteurs du monde. Et nous savons, nous avons montré que nous pouvions traverse, travailler de façon transversale. Ce processus doit être poursuivi. C'est un processus qui ne doit pas nous faire oublier que notre euh, tâche, c'est de rechercher aussi un plaidoyer incisif et des actions à la fois concrètes et inscrites dans un cadre temporel précis. Et donc, je voudrais, j'espère que les trois panels techniques que nous aurons après cette réunion sera de réfléchir à ce qui pourrait être proposé concrètement sur la route de la COP26 d'ici la fin de l'année pour l'action climatique de réfléchir ce que nous pouvons faire pour réduire les risques de catastrophe d'ici la prochaine plateforme globale de réduction des risques de catastrophe, la GP22 en 2022, et de réfléchir ensemble à ce que nous pouvons faire pour améliorer la protection des personnes déplacées par les catastrophes. Voilà, euh, chers amis, le moment est venu maintenant de donner la parole à nos éminents panélistes pour qu'ils puissent nous éclairer et donner leur point de vue. Je vous propose de procéder de la manière suivante. Je me tournerai d'abord vers M. Grandi et M. Vittorino, pour leur demander où en sont l'engagement du HCR et celui de l'OIM dans le cadre de la mise en œuvre de ces trois agendas. Car l'OIM et le HCR, je voudrais leur rendre hommage, sont engagés depuis cinq ans fermement aux côtés de la PDD. Nous venons de signer deux mémorandums d'entente entre notre plateforme et chacune de ces organisations, ce qui crée un cadre de partenariat. Sans le HCR, sans l'OIM, nous ne serions rien. Quelle proposition d'action maintenant peut-on faire Puis je me tournerai vers... Euh, Monsieur Péteri Talas, notre cher secrétaire général de l'Organisation mondiale de la météorologie, pour lui demander de nous faire une photographie objective de la situation scientifique. Où en est la science Que peut-elle nous dire à nous, État et acteurs de la migration et du développement Je demanderai ensuite à 
euh, Madame Missoutori de faire un point sur le cadre de Sendai, comment on a accentué, on a amélioré la mise en œuvre, à M. Sarmad, où en est-on de la mise en œuvre de l'accord de Paris, et nous regarderons une vidéo en préenregistrée de M. Steiner. Nous aurons ensuite une, une question, une petite session de questions-réponses en fonction du temps disponible. Je note que euh, les États-Unis, le Portugal et la délégation de l'Union européenne nous ont demandé avant la réunion de pouvoir faire une brève intervention, donc je leur donnerai à eux la parole en premier. Merci beaucoup, et si vous voulez bien, commençons tout de suite. Filippo, cher Filippo, la parole est à toi. Merci de limiter vos interventions à cinq minutes pour que nous tenions les délais. Merci François. Vous m'entendez Très bien. Vous m'entendez Oui, merci. Thank you, thank you all, and... Uh... By the way, great speech by the Prime Minister of Fiji. I really want to congratulate him because I think it brought home to all of us the reality of the climate emergency in our daily lives, if uh, we had noticed, by the way. So I think it was really a, a, a useful and uh, important opening to this important meeting. And uh, I'd like to uh, thank uh, France and Fiji for convening this meeting and for marking at what I believe is an important point, the fifth anniversary of these important events and frameworks, the, the Nansen Initiatives Protection Agenda, from which much of the uh, platform on disaster and displacement work originates, the Sendai Framework and the Paris Agreement, of course. Now, um, These events, the Nansen Initiative in particular, and in particular its protection agenda, have been very useful, I believe, in the past few difficult years to um, make more clear, precise, and well-known the linkage between the climate emergency and the forced displacement of people. And this, of course, both Sendai and Paris uh, confirmed, and uh, as was mentioned by the Ambassador of France, uh, the, the, the two global compacts, the, the refugee compact, which my organization uh, um, uh, led, and uh, the migration compact, uh, uh, of which I'm sure Antonio Vittorino will speak, uh, were able to build on this key uh, in these frameworks to uh, speak about the link between displacement and climate emergence. Uh, last year was a difficult year. On top of all political difficulties, we had the pandemic. I think uh, that the time has come to focus again and in priority on, on these issues and this, events, this event bodes well in that, uh, uh, in that direction. Um, I'm just back from a few days spent in South Sudan and Ethiopia. And amidst many other things, that was also a good opportunity to reflect about the link between uh, climate and, and displacements. That's a region, as we all know, um, fundamentally impacted by the climate emergency. Um, think of the floods recently affected uh, the region. Think of the plague of the locusts. Think of the drought that periodically uh, impacts populations in the Horn of Africa. And uh, all of these phenomena are causing, as we speak, conflict over scarce resources that adds up to other causes of conflict, of course. And all of these conflicts, as we speak, literally cause uh, uh, displacement. This displacement in turn unveils, uh, reveals, what I would call a little bit in technical language, protection gaps uh, that uh, are affecting uh, people on the move because of this phenomena. And it is on protection gaps that I think we should also uh, work. There's many other situations. Think of the 20,000 people still displaced two years after Cyclone Idai in, in, uh, in Mozambique, a region, a country which, however, hosts other types of conflict and displacement. So the multiplication of these causes is very, is very, risk, is, uh, is very risky. Now, I, I just want to echo what was said. We are very proud of our partnership with the platform on disaster and displacement and proud and happy to have signed a memorandum of understanding last year that regulates better 
our relationship with the platform. Uh, no need to say, but I'll say it once more, climate issues are very relevant to our work. We don't talk, let me say it again here, we don't talk about climate refugees because this has no place in international law, but we do talk about protection needs of those that are displaced by uh, climate, uh, by, by the climate emergency. And we remain absolutely uh, available to lend our expertise in some areas that are fundamental to the response to these, uh, to these movements in protection, in emergency responses, especially during natural disasters, and very important in the search for solutions, which is a very important aspect of our own global mandate. I think that we also, I want also to use this opportunity before I close to remind all that uh, displacement is uh, a result also of the climate emergency, but in turn, it can have an impact on nature and on the environment. And this was flagged very strongly in my uh, few days in Ethiopia in the last uh, few days. Hence, the green energy challenge that my organization has launched and the efforts that we are making together with other agencies to green our own operations, not to become unwittingly ourselves a factor in worsening the climate emergency. So these are all areas on which we have been working we value this platform because it is an opportunity for us to call for support and advocacy around these issues and remain available for further cooperation. I wish everybody all the best in uh, the important debates of today. Many thanks. Merci beaucoup, cher Filippo. Je passe maintenant la parole à Antonio Vitorino. Cher Antonio. Bonjour chers amis, bonjour à tout le monde. Je voudrais tout d'abord commencer pour remercier l'invitation, saluer la France, l'engagement de la France et l'engagement personnel de l'ambassadeur Rivasso pour la présidence française de la plateforme et souhaiter le, les meilleurs voeux pour Fidji dans sa présidence, surtout après un, un témoignage tellement impressionnant que nous venons d'écouter de la part du Premier ministre des Fidji. Et, et ça, c'est une occasion très heureuse parce qu'en effet, une coïncidence historique fait que nous puissions commémorer en même moment, ensemble, trois anniversaires. L'anniversaire de l'initiative Nansen, du Sendai Framework et de l'accord de Paris. François, si tu me permets, je, je tourne vers l'anglais, peut-être c'est plus facile. Uh, I would just like to say that, uh, as Filippo has just emphasized, 2020 was a very awkward year. The world came to a standstill. Uh, everybody was uh, prevented from moving. But uh, the only solid conclusion we can take is that the pandemic did not stop climate change. Climate change uh, went on producing its impacts, whether under the form of uh, disasters, which are uh, extremely relevant in, the, in terms of frequency of uh, extreme weather events or in their uh, duration and uh, impact on human lives and on infrastructures. And uh, there is no vaccine for the climate change impacts in our societies. So I, I believe that the, uh, the Prime Minister of Fiji is very right in saying, we all had expected that in these last five years, we could have done more. Yes, absolutely. But let's also be honest, we have come such a, an important way, especially in the framework of this platform, whether in the Pacific working together under the support of the European Union, together with PDD, together with UNHCR, IOM, we have dealt with a number of events in the Pacific Islands or in West Africa, with the specific and dedicated support of France uh, and ECOWAS to deal with the impacts of climate change in the Sahel region. In both cases, we are seeing uh, an enormous impact on displacement of people because of climate change, whether extreme events, whether we can consider them disasters or, cat or catastrophes, or whether we can take, take it into consideration as a slow onset climate change. But the question I understand, uh, Francois, is uh, what can we do more? 
what can we do in the next five years? Well, I, I would emphasize three points. The first one is that uh, definitely uh, we need, as Philip has also mentioned, to make the best use of the tools we have. And I believe that both the Global Compact on Refugees and the Global Compact on Migration are two political cooperation instruments that give preeminence and visibility to the impacts on people's mobility from climate change. And we need to connect the dots in the sense that everything is a little bit fragmented when it comes to assess the human impact of climate change. And we need to bring together the different tools that we have at our disposal to make sure that we have a coherent and consistent action. And from my side, the IOM side, but also as coordinator of the UN Migration Network, I take the commitment that uh, this year, uh, climate change will be a priority for the UN Migration Network. Bringing together all the UN agencies that uh, one way or another have a mandate that is connected with human mobility and making more visible the impacts on displacement and mobility from climate change. Secondly, definitely, I, I, I believe that uh, uh, the Paris Agreement remains the cornerstone of everything that we have to do. And uh, as the Prime Minister of Fiji said, it's very much welcome the fact that the United States have decided to rejoin the Paris Agreement. That gives us a window of opportunity, but we need to make something from that window of opportunity. And I think that the COP26 and Glasgow will be a unique moment for us not just to relaunch the commitments, the national contributions, but also to put migration and displacement in the agenda of the implementation of the Paris Agreement. I believe that uh, Ovais will speak about that. We are very much committed to, to deliver on the commitments on the task force of the UNFCCC. But I believe that uh, uh, all the countries here around this table should make their efforts to guarantee that uh, our British friends will give to human mobility the prominence, the visibility, and the priority in the COP26 in, in Glasgow. Last but not least, you know, Francois, sometimes I have the feeling that when we discuss climate change in the global north, we see, we all are aware of the importance of the subject, but we think that it will happen sometimes in the future. Well, Climate change has a human face already today. <laughs> that's the reality. And that's why the, the statement of the Prime Minister of Fiji was so powerful, because he explained to us that there are already people's lives being impacted by the concrete effects of climate change. So it's not a question for tomorrow. It's not a question of just setting targets for 2020, 2030, 2050. It's a question of people that are already in need of our support. And uh, definitely from our side, we will be willing to put all our efforts uh, in a giant cooperation with the PDD, with UNHCR, with all the agencies and the member states that uh, are willing to support the countries that are already on the front line of the impact of climate change. So, Francois, merci bien pour uh, l'opportunité et uh, tout le succès pour les Fidji. Merci. Merci beaucoup, Antonio, pour ces fortes paroles. Et je passe maintenant la parole à uh, Péteri Talas pour euh, nous rappeler les données de la science et tout ce que son organisation peut nous apprendre sur euh, l'évolution de cette situation. Euh, Péteri, euh, back to you. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador, and thanks for the invitation to attend this important uh, panel. I'm, I'm grateful for, for you, and we have expressed our uh, gratefulness uh, by organizing sunny weather after several days of uh, of, of, of uh, rain for this, uh, this event. We are publishing on, on an annual basis several uh, stages of climate reports, and, uh, and I would like to summarize what we have uh, just been reporting. So we have been reaching 1.2 degree warming so far, and, um, and there's 25% uh, probability that we will see uh, 1.5 degrees only during the coming five years, at least on a temporary basis. So we are fairly close to the low limit of uh, Paris uh, agreement. And we are breaking uh, 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 records in concentrations of the main greenhouse gases, uh, carbon dioxide, uh, methane, and uh, nitrous oxide. Uh, the glacier melting is boosting. So, so uh, and for example, the melting of uh, Greenland glacier has, uh, has doubled. And, um, and we have started seeing uh, also boost in the sea level price, which was uh, very much uh, uh, emphasized by the 
by the Prime Minister of uh, Fiji. And uh, we have started seeing growing amount of uh, disasters and also growing amount of economic impacts of those uh, disasters. As an example, uh, this week uh, there was a cyclone hitting Fiji and, uh, and there were both casualties and, and severe economic uh, losses. So from atmospheric perspective, we, have, we don't have any good news to report uh, so far. But at the moment, the situation is uh, somewhat encouraging. We have heard good news from European Union, Japan, South Korea, South Africa, UK, and more recently from USA that, uh, that the country is aimed at becoming carbon neutral by 2050. And also what is good news is that China has indicated that they are willing to become carbon neutral by 20, 2060. But what matters is the real action. So, uh, and, and, and uh, we have seen a decrease in the carbon emissions from European Union, USA, and Japan, but, uh, but the emissions in the big uh, Asian economies are still, still rising. This COVID situation has, uh, has uh, caused a 5 to 7% drop of the carbon emissions. And, uh, and there have been also improvement in the improvements in the local air quality. But uh, recently, we are almost back to the normal, normal level. So, so, so far, we haven't seen any improvement in the, in the carbon dioxide concentration of the, of the, of the atmosphere. So, so what matters is what kind of real, real action happens in the coming years. And, and as Antonio said, uh, we, we shouldn't wait for 2050 before we act, but we should uh, act, uh, act now. And the willingness to act is, is, uh, is greater than ever. And, and we have very good uh, indications from private sector and also from the finance uh, sector. And, uh, and some, but sometimes it's also a challenge. Uh, I'm living on the French side of the border here and uh, I saw this Gilets Zone movement and, uh, and, 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 uh, and, and it's also important that the people are buying these, uh, these ideas. So that's, that's not uh, straightforward. But besides uh, climate mitigation, it's very important to pay attention to climate adaptation. And uh, this negative trend in climate will continue until 2060s, anyhow, independent of, the, of our success in, 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 in implementation of the Paris uh, Agreement. And that means uh, growing uh, impacts of uh, negative impacts of uh, climate change, uh, more disasters and, uh, and uh, and we, we should also pay attention to population growth. We have some areas in the world where population is growing. It means that we are having also more and more casualties and more and more victims of this, uh, this, uh, this problem. And, and that's especially the case in, 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 in Africa and some South Asian countries. Uh, uh, we, we just had uh, last week uh, climate adaptation summit uh, hosted by the government of Netherlands and uh, and, and, and there it was very much emphasized that we have to pay attention to early warning services. 40% of the countries have a proper early warning services. And for example, this uh, cyclone Idai, which was hitting Mozambique, it was very, very, fairly well forecasted, but the impact was not uh, understood and, and, and the evacuation of the people didn't take place as, 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 uh, in a proper way. And, and then we have also gaps in, in, in the global observing systems. Uh, Africa, Pacific Islands, Caribbean Islands, and some parts of Latin America have very sparse uh, observing systems, and that's having a negative impact on the quality of uh, early warning services. We are really grateful for France that you have initiated Pro Cruise uh, program, uh, climate risk and early warning services, uh, and we have eight donor countries behind that, and, and Finland, for example, just uh, decided to join join that. So that's. Uh, that's a vehicle to support many, uh, many countries, and we have been able to assist 58 countries with that, uh, that financing. We are grateful for, for that. So uh, to summarize, uh, way to success in climate mitigation and uh, adaptation exists, but the concrete action matters, and uh, so far we, are not, we haven't been able to reach enough. Thanks a lot, uh, Mr. Ambassador, for the opportunity to speak, and uh, I'd like to go back to, to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, dear Petteri. And uh, um, yes, I know you live in France, and uh, so uh, particularly interesting for us to, to to know that you have a direct experience of what happened also on this uh, second side of the border. Uh, and uh, I uh, express the wish that uh, the relation between the platform and WMO will uh, strengthen uh, 
regularly because we need more than ever the science uh, there and uh, your experience. Uh, maintenant, now I would uh, turn to uh, Mrs. Misutori. Uh, Mrs. Misutori, uh, our special representative of Secretary General, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador. And I thank you uh, very much for this opportunity to speak in this panel with so many distinguished um, fellow panelists. It's a very important occasion commemorating the three groundbreaking global initiatives. And of course, all of them are so crucial to achieve Agenda 2030 for the Sustainable Development Goals. Um, five years have passed since the adoption of the Sendai Framework. And as Ambassador, uh, you have already mentioned, every year we now see that 25 million people are displaced by disasters. It's now a well-known fact that more people are displaced by extreme weather events than by conflicts, although as uh, Mr. Grandi uh, pointed out, uh, conflict and extreme weather events at the end are intertwined. Now, this trend runs in parallel with the increase in extreme weather events as global temperatures and sea levels rise. And just last month, we saw that some 80,000 people were forced from their homes when Cyclone Eloise struck Mozambique. And the fact is, in 2019, Cyclone Idai, as highlighted by Mr. Gandhi, many people were already displaced and now they have been displaced once again. The fact that two such storms already hitting Mozambique this year, this is further evidence that in a part of the world where these events were once upon a time considered rare, this is not longer the case. We know that climate emergency is here to stay with us. As a result of human induced changes to the climate, life has become much more precarious for those living in climate vulnerable nations. And we have heard about this firsthand from the Prime Minister of Fiji. Now the great, well, I wouldn't say great, but the good news is that evacuations, sometimes of millions of people in the face of cyclones, storms and floods has become a major element in national and local strategies for disaster risk reduction that have evolved since the adoption of the Sendai framework. And with a better understanding of what is the likely impact of these events, and with the enhancement of early warning systems and early action, we have seen a notable decrease in the loss of life from extreme weather events. However, the number of disaster affecting people, this remains chronically high and being displaced is one of the very harsh ways to be affected by disasters. Long-term displacements, as we know, pushes people to search for new shelters in the slums of major cities, often ill-equipped to receive them, or in neighboring countries, which may already be struggling as a consequence of the disasters, and the reception may not be very friendly, to say the least. So my call today um, from the point of view of disaster risk reduction is for more attention to be paid to risk profiling in hazard prone settings so that environmental protection, land use and building codes are adequately addressed in national and local strategies for disaster risk reduction. Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction says that all member states have to have these strategies both nationally and locally and this is the plan that we need to have. And a plan, if we don't have the plan, it is a plan for failure. And these measures will definitely contribute to reduce the number of people displaced by disasters. We must ensure that the inclusion of these measures are uh, a point that is noted when reviewing the already uh, 100, around 100 national strategies in place and all others which are in the process of being developed. Now, the important thing is that these strategies should be made with the participation of stakeholders who are uh, including the civil society, which work on the matters of displacement and also the people who displace themselves. And these plans should not remain as plans. They should be um, translated into action and for this, financing for disaster risk reduction, which is actually quite pitiful, must be increased. 
Equally important, as I mentioned, is the inclusion of engagement of civil society, including migrant communities, and as uh, Petri mentioned, further access to reliable early warning systems combined with early action and disaster risk information with a focus on vulnerable groups is what we need now. My fellow panelists have all touched upon the coronavirus um, situation. Uh, uh, this is a disaster caused by a biological hazard which was written into the Sendai framework. And we should make a case that the people displaced should not be relegated to the bottom of the queue when it comes to this vaccinations, which is in process in many countries, because displaced people often endure difficult living conditions, including lack of space and poor access to clean water and sanitation. Now, what can we do uh, this year? There will be five regional platforms for disaster risk reductions, which will be held. And this is a place where not only member states, uh, both national and local governments, but all stakeholders, including the private sector, the civil society, um, and the uh, civil um, uh, groups will, uh, will come together and they will discuss on the urgency of enhanced action in financing for disaster risk reduction. And this will include addressing the links between disaster risk reduction and displacement. On October 13, which is the International Day for Disaster Risk Reduction, this year we, will go, we are going to focus on enhancing international cooperation to developing countries for disaster risk reduction. It is a well-known fact that the resources there are scarce. And without this, the countries, especially in the global south and most at risk, cannot fulfill their commitment to the Sendai framework. And this is one of the seven global targets to enhance international cooperation for disaster risk reduction. And this will also contribute to reducing the number of people displaced or otherwise affected by disasters. The regional platforms are important um, occasions on which to promote the protection agenda of the Nazi initiative and to advocate for the needs of people displaced across borders in the context of disasters and climate change. So I would really like to invite all of you uh, here together uh, with us today to consider this as you make your plans to attend the regional platforms for disaster risk reduction and to mark the International Day for Disaster Risk Reduction in October. I would like to close by acknowledging the pioneering role uh, that Norway, Switzerland have played in getting the Nancy initiative off the ground, culminating in the endorsement of the agenda for the protection of cross-border displaced persons in the context of disasters and climate change in October 2015. It is critical that now we all work together to ensure that this important work is duly reflected in key policy discussions throughout this year, including, as many have already pointed out, at COP26. I also extend my organization, UNDRR's gratitude to France and Fiji and the main partners of the platform on disaster displacement for moving this important agenda forward so energetically. Thank you very much for your attention. Back to you, Ambassador. Thank you, Madame uh, uh, Special Representative. And uh, je me tourne maintenant vers, bien sûr, uh, le secrétaire exécutif adjoint de euh, euh, la CCNUCC, euh, UNFCCC, M. Ovai Sarmat. Uh, to you, uh, Mr. Secretary General. Dear Ovai, you have the floor. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Ambassadeur. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be participating in this very distinguished panel with. Uh, uh, Director General IOM, uh, uh, Director General Vitorino, High Commissioner Filippo Grandi, Secretary General Petri Talas, and Mami Mitsuri from the uh, disaster uh, displacement. So it's a real pleasure. And this topic is very close to my heart, and uh, I take uh, particular pleasure in uh, being part of this discussion. I'll be very brief and very direct and uh, speak uh, from my 
experience and very passionately about uh, the topic that we're discussing. First is uh, about uh, the five years anniversary of the different uh, agendas that we just talked about, of which Paris Agreement is one of the centerpiece. And Paris Agreement is remains one of the uh, uh, multilateral systems, the most robust and highly effective uh, tool to address one of our existing ch existential challenge that the world community is facing, that is climate change. 197 parties have uh, parties to the agreement, and of which 190 have ratified. So it's a very sober and a very encouraging. Uh, testimony to the multilateral effort, but it remains still far from being fully implemented and releasing its full potential. So we are in this year particularly uh, focusing on its implementation, full implementation, uh, leading up to the COP26 in Glasgow. By that, what we mean is that we want to make sure that the agreement uh, fully reflects the uh, aspirations, the ambition, and the necessity of doing what we need to do to address and reverse the impacts of climate change, especially on humans around the world. Listening to Prime Minister of Fiji, who was a president of our COP in, uh, three years ago in uh, Bonn, it's very uh, timely that he reminds us that Fiji is just coming out of two category three and category five tropical storms in the two months. Uh, which has uh, created a huge havoc to the population, not just in Fiji, but many uh, low-lying islands in the Pacific. So it's very timely. I mean, it, it, as, as uh, other speakers have said, this is not something that will happen five years, 10 years, or 20 years down the line, but it's happening today. The impact of climate change on humans and, uh, and particularly the most vulnerable around the world. Now, what does that mean in real and practical terms uh, as the Secretariat and the custodian of the Paris Agreement? What are we doing? We are uh, working very closely with all the partners who are uh, in the panel and the discussion today uh, uh, to ensure that the 2030 Agenda, the Sendai Framework and all of that is taken together in an integrated manner. In doing so, we work very closely with uh, many stakeholders. First and foremost, one of the uh, clear and concrete actions resulting from the Paris Agreement as it concerns human mobility is the establishment of Task Force on Displacement, which was established at the same time as, as when the Paris Agreement was adopted back in 2015. Now, what, does, what that does is to strengthen preparedness, including early warning systems, contingency planning, evacuation planning, resilience building, strategies and plans, and develop innovative approaches such as forecast-based financing, and to integrate climate change-related human mobility challenges and opportunities into the national planning processes. And all of us uh, here, we participate in that task force for displacement and there's a lot of work still needs to be done and the way it is to be done and is happening right now is through national adaptation plan we work with all our parties to encourage to support and to provide the technical tools and our exp expertise for the countries to uh, incorporate climate change planning in the national adaptation plan and pdt pdd has technical guidance on that on displacement along with many other partners. Uh, we are also pushing the uh, boundaries and in innovative approaches and contingency measures uh, on resilience continuum, for instance. We are also seeing innovative approaches helping countries and regions to prepare the contingency measures. We are beginning to see some uh, good results there, but uh, there's still a lot to be done. Again, I go back to the example of Fiji uh, Fiji has recently launched the Cli uh, Climate Relocation Displacement Displaced People's Trust Fund to support the relocation of up to 800 communities at immediate threat of sea level rise. And we are seeing some very generous contributions that are being made to that fund. And we expect and we hope many other such initiatives will be launched in the coming, uh, coming uh, future. Finally, something we uh, refer to and highly uh, uh, work 
to advocate its uh, implementation is something we refer to as inclusive multilateralism. Multilateralism often is referred to as multilateral arrangements and discussions among parties or governments or member states. But no, we want the inclusive multilateralism, multilateralism to include private sector, foundations, civil society, and particularly the youth movement these days. They all need to be together. And the platform for disaster displacement is a crucial non-party stakeholder in our process. The platform helps the countries and stakeholders to exchange experiences and incubate actions for the future. As Director General Vittorino had said, that also incorporates the uh, global compacts on migration and refugees. And we are very much working very, very closely with, with those two platforms to provide that inclusivity across the board. And as you also rightly said, COP26 this year under the presidency of UK takes that into account very, very seriously, and we are strongly advocating for its inclusion. So in conclusion, uh, distinguished delegates, uh, dear friends and colleagues, it is a timely moment to commemorate this five-year anniversary of the different uh, agreements, as we said, under the platform of disaster displacement. With your contributions and achievements and tireless view to the future, you remind us that together we can achieve things that may otherwise seem impossible. The challenge is never too big, too complex, or too difficult. That's not in our nature. That's not who we are. Instead, let us work together to overcome climate change and eliminate the associated direct and indirect effects on displacement. Every person is an individual, has a family, friends, and emotions and expectations. And they, they are the ones who are expecting action from all of us. Let us build a better, cleaner, healthier, safer future for all of them. This is possible by mobilizing to achieve the goals of the Paris Agreement, unleashing its full potential. Let us work together to write the comeback story of this century. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Secrétaire Général. Euh, avant de passer au, à la vidéo de Monsieur Steiner, l'administrateur du PNUD, je voudrais vous signaler une question qui nous est posée par Mme Megan Rowling, journaliste de la Thomson Reuters Foundation, qui demande « More concretely, what would you like to see come out of COP26 in terms of moving forward global efforts to address climate-related displacement Can we expect new initiative alliances or specific funding commitments uh, ?» uh, uh, Dear, uh, dear uh, Mr. Samad, I think uh, you are the first one to to, to the, the best place and the first one to maybe uh, give some element of answers. So I shall uh, go now to uh, call uh, Mr. Steiner video. And uh, at the end of this uh, panel, maybe uh, you could find uh, one or two sentences. And if uh, other panelists have some elements to answer, it seems to me that it's an interesting question, uh, a concrete one. And now, uh, dear Atli, back to you uh, for the uh, video of Mr. Steiner. Excellencies, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to join this event to mark the fifth anniversary of the endorsement of the Nansen Initiative Protection Agenda and the adoption of the Sendai Framework and the Paris Agreement. It comes at a pivotal moment. UNHCR tells us that forced displacement is now affecting more than 1% of humanity, one in every 97 people. As climate change intensifies, extreme weather events such as floods, storms, bushfires and heat waves are forcing millions of people from their homes every year. The combined effects of climate change and the COVID-19 pandemic could derail decades of hard-won human development. And yet there is another way. As the UN Secretary General has put it, in 2021, we need to move from death to health, from disaster to reconstruction, from despair to hope, from business as usual to transformation. And there are many reasons to be hopeful despite it all. In the wake of the pandemic, countries are now undertaking unprecedented steps to tackle harmful emissions that are linked to climate threats, which make up the bulk of disaster drivers today. Under our ambitious climate promise, the United Nations Development Program is currently supporting 115 countries to enhance their nationally determined contributions 
under the Paris Agreement. These countries account for approximately one quarter of the world's greenhouse gas emissions. Through our support, we are helping to insert the DNA of a green, inclusive economy into all COVID-19 recovery and stimulus packages. At UNDP, we believe that long-term development approaches are crucial to address migration and displacement. That includes helping countries to design risk-informed development plans and national adaptation plans. For instance, UNDP's work in the Syrian Arab Republic and neighboring countries has benefited millions of people. It has provided temporary jobs to women and young people and expanded access to basic services. We are also working together with other UN agencies to help those displaced by conflict, climate change and environmental degradation. The main priority of the UN system today is helping to find solutions that allow people to stay in their homes and give them the means to adapt to changing environmental conditions. However, we must remember that this is also about choice. People must be able to choose to move rather than being forced to move. And this choice is crucial when it comes to the direction of our climate action efforts. Last week, UNDP and the University of Oxford released the result of the People's Climate Vote, the world's largest ever survey of public opinion on climate change. With 1.2 million respondents, we found that recognition of the climate emergency is much more widespread than previously thought. And urgent climate action has broad support amongst people around the world, across nationalities, age, gender and education level. People outlined four key areas to fix the problem. Conserving forests and land, renewable energy, climate safe farming and green businesses and jobs. As the lights flash red on displacement due to disaster and climate change, countries must listen closely and now make game changing investments in these areas in the wake of the pandemic. Such efforts will be critical to address climate induced displacement. As ever, the entire United Nations system will be there to offer tailored support to countries so that we can get the global goals firmly back on track. Finally, let me express my gratitude to the Platform on Disaster Displacement for your efforts at a time when stakes have never been higher for people or planet. As some of you will recall, my personal association with this work continues to both remind me of our collective responsibility, but also inspire me in trying to look for solutions that have to do with the reality and never lose sight of the aspiration that we have all committed ourselves to. Happy anniversary and let's keep the work going. Thank you. Thank you all. <laughs> Merci, Monsieur l'Administrateur. Merci, Monsieur Steiner. Uh, nous, avons, nous arrivons maintenant à la partie un peu plus interactive. Euh, trois euh, délégations ont demandé la parole. Je vais donner la parole d'abord au euh, chargé d'affaires de la délégation américaine, M. Marc Cassaire, pour une intervention de deux minutes. Marc, the floor is yours. Merci beaucoup, François. Euh, et encore un grand merci à la France et aux Fidji de nous avoir réunis aujourd'hui. Euh, vraiment, je suis très reconnaissant de... de I did ask for the floor today to really underscore the importance the United States attaches uh, to this critical issue and to share just a few insights into the Biden administration's focus very briefly. First, let me just say we do welcome this opportunity uh, to commemorate the Nansen Initiative, the Sendai Framework and the Paris Agreement and take stock of how we collectively can improve uh, the protection of disaster displaced persons around the world. As we have talked about today, people's decisions to migrate uh, are multifaceted. They involve political, social, economic drivers. So as such, the, this past President Biden, he, he's made uh, a number of, of commitments you've heard uh, to mainly manage uh, migration in North and Central America and uh, to work with regional partners to address the root causes of migration. Yet, as we've also discussed today, it is undeniable that the climate crisis has increased the scale and scope of natural disasters and economic hardships, influencing irregular migration and sometimes dangerous displacement. 
So as it relates to our conversation today, there really is no greater long-term challenge confronting the world than climate change. President Biden has launched an ambitious agenda to follow through on his promise to make swift and bold actions to address the climate crisis, uh, building on his decision to rejoin the Paris Agreement. But former Secretary of State John Kerry, as the presidential envoy for climate, will lead our diplomatic efforts to reassert U.S. climate leadership and raise global ambition to meet this challenge. The United States will also work to help vulnerable countries increase resilience and adapt to the devastating impacts of climate change. To that end, we're going to work with bilateral and multilateral institutions to improve the quality uh, of resilience programming and will continue making progress on our commitments to the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction. We will leverage US innovation and climate data and information to promote data sharing and a better understanding and management of climate risk. We will prioritize financing uh, adaptation and resilience initiatives, and we will work with the private sector in the United States and around the world to promote greater collaboration between businesses and the communities in on which they depend. A special, a special presidential envoy Kerry has also announced that the United States will begin work immediately to develop the US emissions target, our nationally determined uh, contribution, as well as host a leaders climate summit in April. Uh, the United States genuinely looks forward to working with all of you uh, to ensure we'll lose no more time in 2021. Thank you so much. Merci, Marc, pour ce message important. Je passe la parole maintenant à l'ambassadeur du Portugal qui représente la présidence européenne et qui prendra la suite de Fidji comme à la tête de la PDD. Ambassadeur Maceiro. Cher François, uh, uh, dear participants, uh, it is a great pleasure that Portugal joins in the commemoration of the 50th anniversary of the endorsement of the National Initiative Protection Agenda, the adoption of the Sendai Framework for Disaster Reduction, and the endorsement of the Paris Agreement. I would like to thank France for an extremely productive presidency and wish the best to Fiji. We're very happy to work with Fiji. During the first semester of 21, while holding the Portuguese presidency, we have aligned our priorities with these international agendas. Portugal is giving further attention to the importance of investing in preparedness and adaptation for more effective response to hazards, including climate, environmental, and biological. Our main focus is on promoting sustainable and durable solutions, while also developing inclusive and climate-aware policies in order to build community resilience. We intend to promote complementarities between climate change adaptation and disaster risk reduction in the programming and implementation of humanitarian action, placing particular emphasis on protecting the most vulnerable, especially those affected by conflicts and emergencies. Today, we have heard from several leaders of international organizations and agencies on the importance of these initiatives as well as the opportunities to scale up action. Nationally, we have very ambitious climate and carbon targets, and we are on good track to fulfill them. I would like to stress that we want to work act actively to give coherence to all the efforts currently going on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, dear Rui. And I pass the floor to the delegation of the European Union, Thomas Wagner, the deputy head. Thomas. Oui, bonjour François, Monsieur l'Ambassadeur, cher François. Merci à vous et aux îles Fidji pour l'organisation de cet événement très important. Euh, je voudrais également remercier le Premier ministre de Fidji pour son témoignage édifiant et émouvant, ainsi que les distingués panélistes pour leur intervention qui souligne toute l'importance d'agir de, de façon déterminée face à l'urgence climatique. L'Union européenne, comme vous le savez, soutient de façon très active ces trois plateformes et continuera bien sûr à le faire à l'avenir sur le plan pratique et avec tout son engagement politique. Given the increasing importance of climate change and disasters and its impact on human mobility, we not only can't afford to forget the adverse impacts of climate change, but we also need to continue to raise and strengthen awareness, policy coherence and action in order to address these. We came far with the adoption and endorsement five years ago and we have advanced on many aspects in the past five years. And today we have a chance to reflect on where we need to focus our combined efforts in the coming five years and beyond. 
the EU has, since the inception of the platform of, uh, on disaster and displacement, been an active member of this important process. And we are pleased that we will become the vice chair from beginning of 2022. For the EU, the external dimension of the European Green Deal is key in our collaboration with partners on many topics discussed today and will address some fundamental root causes of displacement in areas prone to extreme weather events like droughts or floods. We are looking forward to continuing the discussions also after the event today, putting emphasis on action implementation. Maybe to end with a comment, with the highly interconnected agendas, but also three separate frameworks and separate implementation tools, we will also need in the coming months to focus on how to ensure a better coherence and coordination for the sake of global efficiency on our collective action. Je vous remercie. Merci à tous. Euh, je suggère euh, peut-être euh, de donner très brièvement la parole à la première, en réponse à la première question à M. Sarmad. Euh, euh, cher Ovais, voulez-vous répondre en une phrase euh, ou deux à Mme Rowling Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Pour la première question, je vais être très bref. Nous avons very clear objectives of what to expect from COP26 this year. And there are four brief points. One is to honor the 2020 pledges. Promises made should be made to promises to be kept. And that includes one important critical element is provision of finance and technical assistance that was made at the time of adoption of the Paris Agreement especially to developing countries. Uh, that is the first one. Second is to wrap up the outstanding negotiating items of the Paris Agreement, the most important being the carbon trading mechanism, and also loss and damage, which directly uh, reflects what we have discussed today on uh, impacts of human, mobil uh, human mobility as a result of climate change. Third is about lowering emissions and raising ambition. And this is, as we have seen, there is a very strong drive to race to zero by many countries, including we are very uh, pleased to wel welcome back United States uh, after a brief moment of uh, departure from the Paris Agreement. So we have almost 93% of the world's biggest global emitters who have committed to zero uh, emissions by 2040, 50, and so on. So we want to have that reflected with higher uh, levels of emission, ambition. And finally, is not to leave any voice behind. That's what I mentioned also in my intervention, uh, that is inclusive multilateralism. Take everyone together, including the civil society, the youth, everybody uh, has a voice and a role to play in uh, finalizing the uh, outcomes of COP26 this year, which is going to be a pivotal year and pivotal outcome uh, going forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, dear Vice. Uh, we don't have time, unfortunately, to answer in direct to uh, the second question. Maybe, uh, Dr. Atle, during the follow-up, you, you will try to make a written answer to Madame Lea Planche. Uh, merci à tous. Euh, il faut que je conclue très rapidement maintenant parce que nous devons passer tout de suite au panel suivant. Euh, je voudrais remercier euh, vraiment beaucoup chacun des panélistes et, et puis je voudrais dire euh, deux mots. Bon anniversaire et il nous faut encore beaucoup travailler. Merci à tous. Atelier, back to you. Merci. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Merci à vous, Ambassador. Thank you very much, Ambassador, uh, and all participants, all panelists. Um, we are now moving into another meeting format. Uh, you will see on the on the slide that in about 
Um, in, a, in a couple of minutes, we will continue the three technical panels of this commemoration. Uh, you will see uh, on the screen, if you have not registered for that technical session, you can go to the PDD website and do the registration. But this meeting format will now be closed and we will see each other in the next Zoom meeting format in a couple of minutes. Thank you very much and have a good day.